Happy Valentine's Day, everyone who is celebrating it. I figured I'd do Halloween episodes and Christmas episodes, so why not one about Valentine's Day? And this comic was made by the incredible comic book artist Darwin Cook. But before I get started, here are the plugs. Over on my Patreon, I've finished uploading all pages of the 40-page comic anthology, Destructo Boy, and other exciting tales. And I am almost nearing completion of the first issue of Destructo Boy, Era of Alpha Cardinal, Part 1. Uh, it's about 25 pages, and I will hopefully be getting it uh, on sale sometime in the coming months. And back on Patreon, I'm still in the process of uploading the pages to A Dead Fish in the Grass, a 166-page horror graphic novel set in the Old West. If you're still interested in buying the original printing of the Destructo Boy and Other Exciting Tales book, there are still a few copies for sale at $19.99 plus shipping, so check out the link tree in the description. Um, not going to be reprinted, I don't plan on doing that. I'm going straight to the Destructo Boy sequel issues, of which there will be six, eventually. I might do that as a monthly or bi-monthly thing, I'm not sure yet. Also on my Patreon, you can vote each month from one of three video topics. Released in 2002, written by Darwin Cook, with art by Darwin Cook, and colors by Matt Hollingsworth. This is Spider-Man's Tangled Web 11. Open all night. Spider-Man's Tangled Web was an interesting little anthology series that Marvel did from the early 2000s that, um some pretty interesting names worked on. People like Peter Milligan, Greg Rucka, Zeb Wells, who is now writing the mainline Spider-Man comic. Oh, and Garth Ennis wrote three issues. The story begins in the early evening of February 14th in the skies high above New York. Spider-Man fights Vulture, trying to stop him from absconding with a priceless piece of jewelry from Tiffany's. And look at how incredible just this title page is. It's a two-page spread, and Darwin Cook just... Oh my gosh, it's just excellently crafted. Look at how he includes the fucking name of the story into the scene itself. That's incredible. It looks so good. Spidey gets kicked mid-swing and slams into an overhang right across from the Daily Bugle. J. Jonah Jameson smiles gleefully and orders Edward the intern to get photos because that damn Parker is nowhere to be found. But that idiot Edwards can't even work a camera, so they miss everything. Spider-Man picks himself up very slowly because he probably has a concussion. Vulture flies back to finish him off and Spidey leaps into action, completely missing him. But before he plummets to his demise, he thwips the Vulture's ankle and is dragged behind him much to the chagrin of Jonah. Vulture soars, leading Spider-Man directly into a trap he had set. He slams Spider-Man into a smokestack and activates his bombs. And Spider-Man is blown up and away. Vulture flies off. Alf? Vulture flies off into the night and Peter hits every side of an alleyway before he falls unconscious in a pile of garbage bags. If he didn't have a concussion, he definitely does now. Cut to the cubicle of Jillian Blythe at the Daily Bugle. She works away tirelessly at her newest article and exclaims in glee when she's finally finished it. Spence, an intern on a coffee run, asks if she wants her usual. She asks for a triple shot, because she's got a hot date tonight. Elsewhere in the office, Kasithi Garba Khan, or K for short, is approached by Spence to get her order. She says that she doesn't need any coffee, she's nervous enough about her date tonight. So Spence heads out of the office, almost trampled by a herd of reporters rushing out of the elevator. I love these three panels so much. I love that the word balloon is cut off. Such a great idea to just convey the rush and, like, you know, speed that these characters are moving at. So Spence walks his way down the streets of New York, unknowingly passing an unconscious superhero in a dark alley. He arrives at the coffee bean, very original name, and runs into the schmuck named Angus, who calls him JJJ's personal coffee boy. Why do people say the three J's? It's just, it's so clunky. Just say JJ. Everybody knows who you're talking about, Angus, you fucking idiot. And anyway, Spence is like, well, I'm the one who is a journalism intern, and, uh, what side of the counter are you on, coffee boy? Then Jenny, the cute blue-haired barista, tells Spence not to pay any attention to Angus. Then they talk, and she says that she thinks Spence's job is really cool. And Angus is like, Hey, butt wipe, are you trying to pull my girl? Jenny is very quick to tell him that she is not, and never will be, his girlfriend. And then she calls him a loser. Then she leans back to Spence and says, 
Ah, you go on one lousy movie with the guy and then it's welcome to Stalkerville. The two talk and flirt as Angus fixes the order and pours some laxatives into JJ's coffee cup. Then he gives Spence the order and he leaves. Elsewhere, Spider-Man's face is licked by a little dog. Peter shoes him away and this little pup struts his stuff out of the alleyway past Spence. Back at the Bugle, Spence dispenses the coffee. In the women's bathroom, Kay finishes up her makeup but is shocked when Jillian barges her way in to do the same and accidentally jokerizes herself. Jill starts going through her giant bag, absentmindedly pushing Kay out of the way, and Kay rushes away and out of the office. In his office, JJ finishes yelling at Edwards and prepares to drink his coffee when his phone rings and his wife is on the other end. Spence is perched up on a desk drinking his coffee when Jill walks out of the women's room in a sexy little black dress. Spence asks who the lucky guy is, and she smiles and says it's Peter Parker. Elsewhere, Kay walks her way down the streets of New York, unknowingly passing an unconscious superhero in a dark alley. And she arrives at the coffee bean. She takes a seat at the counter and starts talking to Jenny when none other than Flash Thompson comes up and hits on her. She quickly shoots him down and says that she already has a date with someone who has a job and a personality. Elsewhere, Jill walks her way down the streets of New York, unknowingly passing an unconscious superhero in a dark alley. And she arrives at the Coffee Bean and makes a grand entrance. And I, I just want to point out that Cook uses the exact same page layouts and like, you know, images for each of their introductions at the diner. Kay gets un very annoyed that Jill is there and Jenny tries to calm her down by saying that Jill is just a bit of a flirt. Well, a big flirt. So Jenny and Kay keep talking and she asks Kay who she's waiting for. And Kay bashfully says that it's Peter Parker. And Jill immediately swings around because she also has that date with Peter Parker. And Flash is totally shocked that puny Parker got not one date with a gorgeous woman, but two dates with two different gorgeous women. And back at the Bugle, JJ berates an absent Parker for missing out on getting sweet pictures of Spider-Man. Then his wife shows up because they have reservations for an opera show later that night. And back in the alley, Peter finally wakes up. He clambers to his feet and at least makes it out of the garbage pile before seeing colorful spots and falling back to the ground. And his glove unfurls and reveals a little heart with eight o'clock written on it. Back in the diner, Kay and Jill argue and call each other various names. Kay says that she and Peter are meeting here and then going to a Miro exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art. She asked him out last week when she ran into him at the library. Flashback time, Kay nervously walks over to Peter who writes in his notebook. Unfortunately, he's too busy thinking about Aunt May and Doc Ock and his bills and Doc Ock and Doc Ock. Jill's like, oh, he must have completely forgotten about you when I asked him out today. Flashback time, Jill confidently turns on her charm in the Bugle's lunchroom. She says that she has first row tickets to something, and then she writes on his arm with a marker. And I just want to say that this panel is like, it. I feel like it exemplifies Matt Hollingsworth's amazing work as the colorist. It's just every panel pops, and this one especially, just the contrasting uh, cool blues and the bright red of the marker and the writing and her lipstick. It's, oh man, it's great. Kay says that Peter is probably too embarrassed to reply. He doesn't like an aggressive type. Jill asks what Peter's type is exactly, and Kay tells him that he's a scholar and a scientist. He needs a woman with similar interests to stimulate and support him. Then she imagines a life with Peter. He a professor, or maybe a scientist, or a doctor. Maybe they live at a nice modern cottage. And maybe one day, they have a family together. Jill laughs wildly at this, and says that Kay has no idea what Peter wants. He needs adventure, he needs a strong woman. Then she imagines them as a super team of reporters, following Spider-Man into the fray with their cameras and audio recorders at the ready. Speaking of Hollingworth's colors, look at how great this panel is! He emulates the color printing of old comics just excellently. He even has the sections where the colors overlap or are just off from the printing. Just as they're about to get in each other's faces, Flash says that it's past eight, meaning Peter stood both of them up. And back at the Bugle, Jonah walks back to his office and says that he's finally ready to go. But he can't find his wife. So he starts walking around and eventually he goes out into the hallway and finds her coming out of the bathroom, feeling very unwell. She then almost immediately races back inside and Jonah laments the money he'd lost on those opera tickets and heads back to his office. He picks up the coffee, gives it a sniff, and then calls Spence. Uh, yes, Mr. Jameson? Son, it's late, so I'll cut to the chase. Someone put something in my coffee. 
You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? JJ, I mean, sir, I, I would never, I wouldn't... I know you wouldn't, son. But who would? I have no idea, sir. Oh, wait, wait. Tonight at the coffee bean, uh, Angus, he said he was making you a, a special? Ah, Angus. Never did like that kid. You know he tried to get me to hire him instead of you? Makes you think, doesn't it? Anyway, good night, son. Good night, sir. Spence walks through the lobby and says good night to Mr. Toomey, the security guard, but before he walks out the doors, he's stopped, and Toomey tells Spence that some girl stopped by with a letter to give him. Toomey asks if he's got a date tonight, and Spence thanks him, but says that he doesn't have time for girls when he's a newspaper man. He begins his trek home and decides to open up the envelope. Inside is a Valentine's Day card. Spence reads it and immediately breaks out into a run. Back at the coffee bean, Kay and Jill have finally come to terms, deciding not to fight over a jerk like Peter Parker. Jill proposes that they go over to his place and give Peter a piece of their mind, but neither of them actually know where his apartment is. But Flash does. He proposes that he take them there, and then, hey, maybe afterward, if they want to do it, they can uh, go out for a drink. As the three are leaving, Spence races past them and inside the coffee bean, where Angus tells him to leave because they don't allow loitering. Then Jenny comes out from the back and says that he's here to see her. She puts on her coat and says that she was worried that Spence wouldn't get her card. Spence tries to speak as he inhales air and she tells him it's all cool. The two then leave and Spence wishes the coffee boy a happy Valentine's Day. As they leave into the cold night with warm romance, a figure makes their way into the coffee bean. Uh, whoever you are, go away. Good evening, Angus. Jo Jonah? Jo hey, what brings, you, what brings you down here? Oh, I just stopped by to personally thank you for that special coffee you whipped up for me tonight. The funny thing is that it was my wife that drank it. She was telling me how delicious it was when she suddenly took ill. Anyway, she couldn't finish it, and I thought it was sure would be a shame to waste it. Then I thought of you. Drink up, Angus. Back in the snow-covered alleyway, a homeless man comes across Peter. He wakes him up so that Peter doesn't freeze to death and asks what happened to him. Peter says that he was at a costume party and someone stole his wallet and clothes. Peter then stumbles up and asks if the guy has any extra clothes in his cart. The homeless man agrees, but only on the conditions that they trade for the costume. Peter agrees if he throws in some boots. Sometime later, Peter marches his weak and beaten body through the moonlit snow. He shuffles into the lobby of his apartment building and is set upon by Jill and Kay. They chastise and berate him, and Peter's like, I'm sorry. Oh and falls like a sack of potatoes. I'm sure in his mind he said it perfectly and didn't even realize what happened. That's the fun thing about passing out when you're standing up. One second you're up and moving around, however sluggish that is, the next, you're someplace else. Kay and Jill freak out and start trying to wake him up. They both cradle him and Peter finally starts coming to and he says, oh, am I in heaven? And they both embrace him. In the epilogue, Adrian Toomes knocks on the door of a small home. An older woman answers and Adrian apologizes for showing up so late. He says that it's been 20 years to the day and begs for her forgiveness and says that he came here to announce his intentions. He shows her the ring and they both embrace. The ever loving end. I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Is. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. What did you think of this uh, short little Spider-Man story? I think it's really great. I, I love this. I, I really love Darwin Cook. I didn't for a long time. I didn't really get his whole... Uh, I didn't really get it, I guess. I didn't get why everybody dug it. Uh, that was mainly because I had only ever seen his um, The New Frontier, which is great. But um, yeah, I just didn't... I didn't see it. But then I started reading uh, more of his works and, like, you know, the smaller stuff like this. And, man, it is just... His work is great. It is fantastic. Especially this. I would have loved to have seen him do more Spider-Man stories because the amount of emotion and heart that he puts into just this one issue of a book is way more than was ever put into a Spider-Man comic in the entire decade of the 90s. It's such a shame that he only ever wrote and drew one other Spider-Man story, which was a Christmas story in um, Spider-Man's Tangled Webs, again, uh, issue 21. I love the characters in this story, both old and new. Spence, Kay, and Jill are all great characters who are really fun to see and read about. Uh, I especially love Spence and uh, Kay. I just found them to be the most relatable. <laughs> I wish I found Peter more relatable, if you know what I mean. 
But that's okay, because I've found the perfect person for me, and we're both together now. And I'm sure that you will one day find the person perfect for you, too. Don't give up. It's Everybody has someone out there. Uh, I know you probably hear this a lot, or you see people talk about this a lot. Uh, I didn't believe it for a long time, but I do believe that it's more or less true. Uh, so, you know, don't give up. Just keep trying to find the person for you if that's what you want to do. Um, don't try too hard, though. You got to gotta sort of level it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, do whatever makes you happy. If you don't want to be in a relationship because that makes you happy, that's fine. Do that. If you do, you know, just don't give up. Just keep working at it. Maybe make a sigil. That's what I did. And if there was one thing I would want to see from a new Spider-Man comic, you know, once they uh, reset the status quo like usual, is to put Peter back in the Daily Bugle so he can interact with more characters like this. Just fucking bring these characters back. Either in like a main uh, mainline story of Spider-Man comics, or crazy idea here, Marvel. Bring back the Daily Bugle. Make that... Not a three-issue mini-series. Make that an ongoing series. It would... It's its basically Gotham Central. You've seen that this is a thing that could be successful. Just fucking do that again and introduce these characters back into the story. I, these are like my favorite kind of books. Is when we see the little people of, you know, these big universes from the big two interacting. And like what they do all day. There was, um, fuck, what was it called? It was like Frontlines, I think, from uh, when Civil War was going on, maybe Secret Invasion, I can't really remember, uh, which was about the, uh, uh, like, Ben Urich and other reporters uh, documenting the Civil War in Marvel. Um, that was a fun series, but it was just too ingrained into uh, following the main event. I want something like this each issue, where... You know, here and there we'll follow, like, someone has a lead-up on Frogman or something, and then there's, like, a side story running by that's about Spence and Jenny getting caught up in whatever. That would just be so much fun. If you're celebrating your relationship and love today, I hope everything goes well. If you're not, I hope the same. Uh, hey, if you want, I'll be your Valentine. You can tell people that a... Technically, world-famous YouTuber is your Valentine. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Is that how you blow a kiss? There you go. I think that's what you do. Bye.